All right, good afternoon. Uh, Why well, you expected the preacher to start with praise the Lord? Uh, but yes, a very good afternoon. So, uh, thanks, Gerard, for bullying me. And, uh, okay, you want me to say Reverend Gerard? Yeah, so, he bullied me, but uh, it's all right. Now, um, I, I have some introductory remarks, but uh, shortly. There were two guys here. I don't know where they have gone. One of them needs to be near because we will need their ministry. And uh, uh, yeah, as we go along. It's good to be here. It's a pleasure for me to be here as well. And I would have loved to be here with the rest of the family. But unfortunately, something else that is also very important came up. And so we had to split ourselves. But I bring you greetings from Najuna and her mother. Uh, yeah, Bambi, she, I asked, do I send greetings? I said, please send. All right, so they would have loved to be here, but they, they can't be. But yeah, they know I'm here, and they prayed for me, and uh, I think they wish me well. They wish us well. Um, so, until, I think I realized I hadn't said this here, but some, some, some time ago I did share but I thought that I needed to walk in the light with some of you brethren who may not have known. Until recently, I was a treasurer of this cathedral about two months ago. That role I relinquished. And uh, so uh, now I'm no longer doing that role, just in case you never knew, you didn't know. So I just thought I would walk in the light with you. And then I continue to preach. Now can I continue? Ah, thank you. Thank you. It's good to walk in the light with the brethren. They can be there seeing you and say, that's our guy. Then you tell them, no, I'm not. We can talk in private in case you want to know the, the reasons around that. But yes, I thought I needed to walk in the light in that regard. So the theme for the month, uh, I think as uh, Reverend Lovins has started last week, was on uh, true transformation. True transformation. Uh, and she did a very, very good Exposition. I wasn't here myself, but I managed to, to listen to the message. Thank God for, for these you know, things. So, we, are, we continue in that same theme of transformation. True transformation. Now, transformation would have been enough, but Musumbai uh, had said to add true transformation so that, you know, to emphasize the real sense. I mean, for us to really know that Indeed, you are saved. You have come to the Lord. Sorry, this someone has a bit of tongues, but there will be a bit of, there will be interpretation. So indeed, that you are saved, and there is true transformation. And that's now where we enter to discuss today's topic of putting off your old self. Now, that portion or reference is somewhere in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and I, I, I request that you have it open. Uh, as Nathan read for us very, very clearly, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and he read from verse 17 onwards. But to appreciate the transformation or the putting off that is required of us, it is helpful to look a little backwards. Or the, the putting off that Paul was requiring of the Ephesians, it is helpful to look a little backwards to what he was discussing, or, you know, the beginning of chapter 4 is a therefore. So it's helpful to look backwards to see and appreciate why, indeed, we need to, or we are encouraged to put off our old self. What is the old self, anyway? And then what are we supposed to do? If we put it off, do we remain naked? Or there is a, another action that should follow afterwards? So, Looking backwards, just a few pages, uh, the whole of chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, the apostle celebrates the work that God has done in bringing us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he goes on and on and just makes clear and says, and we're going to read a portion of it, how you guys were dead. You guys were in darkness. You knew, you, you were enemies of God. You were without God in the world. And God, through his grace in Christ Jesus, has brought you out of that darkness into his marvelous light. 
and made you a people of God, and made you children of God, and made you all these great things. Therefore, he exhorts them, you need to put off all these things that were a part of you, that were you before, to be and represent the new you that has been made alive in Christ. So I'll ask us to just open a few pages before chapter 2 of Ephesians. Chapter 2 of Ephesians. In this church, you still come with your Bibles, huh? Yes? Hey, okay. M Malcolm was shaking his phone. All right, so it's good to have that one there as well, provided it didn't distract you. Uh, chapter 2. We could have read the whole three chapters, but I thought the time doesn't permit us to do that. Uh, but chapter 2, I think for me, captures the main part of the message of the description, what we were before, what has God made us in Christ Jesus. And I will read from verse 1. And you, that is me, you, uh, all of you, what, uh, supposing all of you, I hope you are all Christian. If you are not, we will help you before the sermon ends. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, and according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised up together, and made to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we might walk in them. And he continues, and he continues and continues. But let me first ask, are there men and women here who are saved? Okajunwa. If you know that you're Okajunwa, please. Aha. Uh -huh. So, praise the Lord. Usually you say amen, eh? Praise the Lord. Karim kama simu. So, you, rip, you identify with the great work that God did in getting you from where you are, destined for death. Yeah? And in Christ Jesus. Out of his great grace, you did not do anything, you did not deserve, you did not apply to be a Christian. God extended grace to you. And you received this grace and said, look here, I would like to be a part of that. God extended his grace and saved us and picked us out from our deadness. You are dead, he has made you alive. You are not saved, he saved you. You are not a child of God, he made you a child of God. Remember what the word, the word says in John chapter 1. Do you remember yeah, how he gave us all through Christ Jesus the right to be called sons and daughters of God? You are not, now you are. If you are not, you can be. God extended grace to us like that. So much that he had to come himself. Himself. He had sent the, the apostles, he had sent all these big men. It wasn't working. He himself. Now, in, in work politics, there is a point where you escalate. Eh? Do you guys understand that language? You are pursuing someone, it's not working, this guy is not giving feedback, then you copy his boss. Do you, do you know that kind of politics? Yeah? You, are, you are escalating the matter to someone of a higher authority to pay attention to the thing which this guy is not paying attention to. Then after a while you see, you see some traction, you see things going on. The highest office that our condition could be escalated to, it was escalated. And God himself said, okay, let, let, let me deal with us. Also, 
Sometimes, again, in work politics, when the, the boss sees something, he feels like it's not yet time for him to get involved. He's like, you, 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 you attend to that. Uh, our, our Nathan in copy will ad- attend to this. That point passed, and he said, look here, I will go. I will go. I will go because this assignment requires the highest authority that we can get. This assignment of our salvation, of getting us to be worth something, required himself, God himself, to come on the earth, live like us. You imagine how weak you are. You are hungry. There are some things that we go through as humans that are a bit embarrassing. You fat, yeah? So you imagine God himself. You get dirty. Am I making, I'm trying to use extreme examples to get you to appreciate how much God got from his high place to come and do the assignment of saving us. Yeah? Himself, one day he was hungry. He was hungry. God. Eh? He was hungry. All the way to the cross, embarrassment upon embarrassment. It just keeps escalating, just keeps going up. Even that part which you read and you don't want to believe that he was hung naked, you just... Eh. Nah, no, I think it wasn't so much. You get that one. Now, don't let your mind go so far, yeah? That one, because of the work of making you a child of God. A child of God. Sometimes I think we struggle to put off our old self because maybe we forget what God had to go through to save us. Do you think like me, like, that sometimes you feel like ah, this Christian thing is requiring of you so much? I like uh, being a Christian is so hard. Huh? You think it's so hard, isn't it? You imagine, if, if some, when you're in those moments, pray to God to take you back and just give you a reflection of exactly what he had to go through to get us to where we are now. That way, we would recognize that our salvation is not cheap. It's not cheap. It cost him so much. And we always sing those songs, eh? you laid aside your majesty. Do you remember that one? Do you guys still sing it? You still sing it? But I came with a new one today. I'm going to give you jams you you didn't know before. So anyway, we forget. We forget how much God has saved us. We, We think that now what he requires of us is, uh, is so much, but if we consider that he has done the greatest part, he did the greatest part, what we are left to do is, is some part, but even, even that part, he's enabling us. I pray that whenever you find yourself in those moments, God will help you to remember that you have been bought and bought with a price. That price was the Son of God himself hung on that tree. His blood shed for you and me. You are precious to God. You are precious to God. You did not come easy into the family of God. He laid himself down for us. You did not ask for it, by the way. There are things that come to you when you have asked. You've ever applied for the job. You've ever applied. You even talk to the people who work there. How can I get this job? Then somehow you get it. This one you didn't. You didn't. You were your red mob. You did winter. What? All those things. I don't remember. The brother used to read a lot in the night. For me, I just didn't. My mind can't work so much like that. But you go through all these things. Then you get a first class. You're like, yeah. You did not. You did not. You did not do nothing. The scripture says, not by works lest anyone should boast. So God disarmed us and left us with nothing to boast about in our salvation story. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord so much because that is what God went through. The assignment of getting you into the family, into the household of faith. It cost the Lord. It cost him big, big, big time. So much more than it will cost you to put off your old self. So much. So much more. And there's a nice one. I was, I I know, as I thought about this chapter two, I just remembered that good hymn. I'm so wondrously saved from sin. 
Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Do you know that song? Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my... Do you know that song? There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. You don't know those hymns? What do you guys sing? Eh? I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my sin was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Don't know those nice songs. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad that I've entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. At least you've got the chorus. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my sin was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I've taught you a new song. You can go and Google it maybe. You, you sing it better than me. But just the celebration of what God has done in getting us into the family of God. Sometimes when the Christian journey becomes hard, remember where we have come from. Now let me make a little joke. It's not the same, but you know how some guys have been beefing because of continuously reminding them of 1986 and before. That's a bad joke. But anyway, when the Christian journey seemingly becomes hard with this putting off, remember where we have come from. We have come from a place where we were going to hell and God saved us. Hallelujah. We were going straight full speed. Peke hell. God saved us. We need to celebrate more. In fact, I liked what uh, Gerard was saying here about October. You don't have to wait for October to have this salvation conversation, what the gospel conversations. You don't have to wait till October. I think that sometimes our hearts grow cold around this great testimony of what God has done for us. And when they grow cold, living for God then feels like a burden. But if we could remember and be reminded on a daily basis, that look here, you were saved. Saved from the penalty of sin. Saved, saved, saved. God is a savior. Hallelujah. So then he continues in chapter 3 to tell about the mystery, to talk about all these great things that God has done, how he is now our peace the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone that he tried apostles, prophets, etc., but it is Christ, the most important part, aspect of all this conversation of, of salvation. Enter now chapter 4, when he says, now look here, you are not the other same man. You are not the other same man. You should not live like that same man who was dead in sin, who was... Uh, you know, all those things that we have discussed. So chapter 4, if we find him in verse 17, discussing the new man. Have you ever heard of the new man ministries? Eh? Inner man ministries? Okay, I think it's inner man. I, there are some ministries that have nice names like this one. Anyway, so you can go and start a ministry called the new man ministry. Anyway, so he, he enters now and says, look, this I say to you, therefore, and I testify in the Lord, you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God, being separated from the life. They are like aliens. They don't know the life of God. Because of ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart, who being, fast, who being past feeling 
have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. That's not how you learned Christ. That's not how you understood Christ. And he says, if indeed you heard him and have been taught by him, and the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let me first stop there. So, this conversation of putting off your old self or your old man, when I, sometimes we make the gospel so difficult, or the, the word so difficult. It's English, eh? put off. In, in, in vernacular, what is putting off? Eh? Wanji? Eh? Okujura. Uh huh, others? Okwe Ambula. That now, that is a. It can extend, eh? Okay, let's take it. Which other ones? What are there? Eh? Guys, it's the same thing. But I think when you consider it in the vernacular, there is a bit more to it. There is some action. Okujura. Then you know there is effort. Huh? So as I thought about this, uh, this putting off and putting on, and I'll discuss putting on in a short while, mind said, it's not like, it's not like you uh, put off, like how you switch on, maybe like a light, put on the light, put off the light, okay, maybe that's also a little, a little effort, but okujura made for me a bit more sense, because you cannot say, jura light, you, you get, you can't, you can't kujura the light, like how you say put off, the, put on the light, put off the light. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah? For I, I felt that the word, uh, maybe Okweyambula is a bit more, it brings out the point home. It's not like a simple, you know, like how English, like some guy likes to say English is limited. Okujura, Ningokweyambula, you is an action. It's not passive. It doesn't just wake up and find you there and then somehow you've put off, and then also finds you there and somehow you've put on. No! It's a deliberate effort to remove from your system these things that have been so stuck in your system. It's not easy. But there is grace. Hallelujah. You are saved by grace. That grace, when it saves you, doesn't leave you there. That same grace sustains you in your Christian walk. That same grace will lead you home. Amazing grace. Do you remember it? Yeah? Amazing grace. How sweet what? The sound. That saved us. What? A wretch like me. That same grace is what enables us to get to that point and beyond. That effort, that... Uh, so, so, as I thought about it, I thought that maybe, and there's a way how our, our Kujunwa these days is a bit different than how we, how we learned it. So, Oriana, Junwa, but it remains the same. Yeah, the person gets saved but remains the same. The same guy who was, uh, before he got to know the Lord, is the same guy after. And I'm like, what, what are we up to? What, what are we, what are we, what, what, what do we think we are doing? You cannot be a new man, and you're still about the same old things that you were about before. Yeah? You cannot be. No, that's not true transformation. That's not the gospel that you have learned. That's not the gospel that the apostle is talking about here. You put off the things that drew your heart before. You deliberately, by the grace of God, allow, say, no, I'm not going to let myself be drawn to those things. Yeah? You get saved, but you still want to be about the same, you know, things that you are about. And, and, and there are things here that they can't even be named. Chapter 5 talks about some things that can't be named among the brethren. I think we need to be more serious as Christians, isn't it? Yeah. There are things that never used to be named among us, but then they have become more and more common. Did, did we get saved? Did we really get saved? Eh? And, and it's interesting the list that the apostle begins with. 
in uh, verse 25 of uh, chapter 4. Therefore, putting away lying, 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 okubia, lying, eh? okulimba, lying, how many of us lie? <laughs> it's a white lie. No, we are, we are not serious, isn't it? We are not. Lying. It's here. It's in the Bible. Guys, it's not the big sins as yet. It's lying that he began with listening. Lying. Eh? Why don't you just tell the truth, man? <laughs> the truth sets you free. You know when you tell a lie, then you have to tell another one to cover up this one, then you tell, ah, okay, it's just bad. So, after a while, you, when sometimes it becomes very expensive to come back and say, and undo this string of lies that you have been telling. Some of them guys be like, ah, this one goes to the grave with me. Please, why are, you, why are you burdening yourself like that? Why? Just tell the truth. There is nothing under heaven that the truth, where the truth is a disadvantage, I don't know it. I don't know it. Maybe I am young, maybe I'm inexperienced, but I don't know anything under heaven where I lie is, in the grand scheme of God, the advantage. One day Abraham lied, and then the Lord came and had to deal with the situation. And then the king said, you man, why didn't you tell me this is your wife? Perhaps I was going to make a scene here. Eh? Guys, lying. Yeah? <laughs> and there are many more things. I don't want to list them. But he says, but let each one speak the truth with his neighbor. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And, and sometimes, of course, it's not as easy as I'm saying it. As you know, you know, as you do work, what, what, it's, it's a bit sometimes can get you, you feel like in that moment you must lie. When I have told a lie, it has not helped. It has not helped. In fact, for me, you know, let me not go there, it's not about me. But yes, the truth will always set you free, even when people don't want to hear it. Somehow we will know, okay, that's how that guy is, we will not come back next time. Yeah? Please. Lying. Verse 25. Therefore putting away all lying. Let each one speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. You know those of us who have anger problems. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. No give place to the devil. Let him who, st who, st who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor with his own hands what, with his hands what is good that he may have something to give to those who have need. Now, stealing is here also, yeah? Stealing. Stealing, we call it what? Corruption, embezzlement. It's stealing. You have stolen. You know you don't like to be called a thief, eh? But you have stolen. Yes, you have stolen. The apostle is saying, let him who stole, steal no longer. You forget that stuff of Robin Hood, you're stealing from the rich to give the poor. Zero. You have stolen. God will find a way of getting for the poor. Just work with your hands that you may have what you can give. That's what the apostle is saying. Work with your hands. You have stolen. So you are there in the office. They have said, oh, you've now gotten that job. Ah, you are in things. So when I got the job that I'm doing now, guys thought, I, I must be, I must be yeah, in things. Because somehow I have a say around expenses and money in the company. So guys thought, Ah, this guy is going to make a kill from here. And I'm like, how? How? Unless you're not a Christian. What are you doing? But if you're a Christian, please, why are you being named among those who are stealing? If you have been stealing, steal no longer. Hallelujah? Yeah, steal no longer. That's transformation. Transformation doesn't come in big, big ways. We are going to get those ones, but the little things... Really, obedience in the little one gives you the strength now to obey even in the bigger ones. You don't tell the lie when you're tempted to tell the lie. You'd be like, hey, where are you? Ah, I'm here in Bueo Gere. No, you are in Kampala. Yeah, you begin with those. Guys, it may look so simple, but that's where we lose it as Christians. Still re remaining stuck with those, you know, with things. Of course, because when you tell the truth, guys are going to be angry with you. But you tell it. Maybe it will help you transform. You get. I may give, I'm not, these are not my words. They are in the Bible. It's not me who said stealing and lying. See ya. Yeah? Uh-huh. Do not let the sun go down when you're angry. No, no, no. no give. Uh, so we had finished that one. 
Let no corrupt word come from your mouth, but what is good and necessary for edification, that it may please, that it may impart grace to those who are hearers, to the hearers, do not grieve the Spirit of God, by whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all manners. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. These things are self-explanatory. Uh, if you want them in the vernacular, go and read your Bible in the vernacular. It's, it's the simple things of everyday living, everyday life, that have the, a great, great, great impact. But then he continues in chapter 5 to suggest more, more actions that represent not only a putting off, but also a putting on. So, you remember that uh, it was, uh, I think it was Jesus teaching about, was it deliverance? Anyway, you cast out a demon. You remember that lesson? You cast out the demon, you, it's like you have cleaned the house. But if there is nothing to fill the house, then the demon goes around and says, hey guys, the guy is still clear, you come back, we see what to do. It reinforced with seven others. You remember? Seven others. And Jesus then said, the state of that guy afterwards is worse than he was before. Now this Kujunwa, where you just Kujunwa and stay there? No, it's not the one. You put off, I don't remain naked, you put on the new man. And we are going to see now. And he says, uh, he suggests so many things, but I will read up to verse, uh, maybe verse, what, what, what am I, 20, 10, there about. Then it says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Yeah? Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. It is it. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not even be named among you. Hmm? Let me read again. But fornication and all uncleanliness, all covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So, this thing is as it is. Eh? In fact, I was wondering whether I was going to preach a long sermon because I was like, we can just read the, the portion and then we go home. Yeah, we just listen. And say, this is the word of the Lord. Then you guys say, That's, thanks be to God. Then we close and we go home. Please, guys, this is what the scripture is saying. Yeah. Some things should not be even named among us. And but, you know, every other day you see it, then something else comes up. Please, if you've been fornicating, stop. Stop. That's not you. That's not the new man. If you've been, you know, that thing, stop. Eh? No, it's not you. It's not you. It's not you. That's not the new man. That's not the testimony of the believer. Man, those guys in the fellowships of past, when the guy got saved, he'll come here and say, look, I was like this and I have stopped. And then begin to walk from there on with the help of the brethren in this new life. Yeah? Please. This should not be named among us. Okay, we have fallen. Yes. Up until now, when you're listening to the sermon, you had fallen. That's okay. Now we are finished falling. Let's get up. All right? This is what we have been called to. This is the life God has called us to as imitators of God. Now you, you may be saying, ah, no, I'm not, I'm not like this, but maybe you are doing it by yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah? Self, personal administration, whatever else you call it. You know what I mean? Have I spoken so much uh, gray language? You will get it. But please, this is what we have been called to. This should not be named among us. It should not be named among us. Let's not give the enemy a foothold. That's what the scripture is saying. And he continues, let no one deceive you with empty words. 
For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed and made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Yeah? So you are thinking of going for that festival in Jinja. Please, that's not you. That's not you. That's not you. It's not you. Uh, don't even say I'm going to preach there. No. It's not you. There will be no someone there, I can assure you. <laughs> no someone. That's not you. Please, can, can we be honest? That's not you. Yeah? Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will shine. I'll, I'll talk about this, this subject of the light as I conclude. Verse 15, and walk. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time uh, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting one to another in the fear of God. And he goes and even teaches about marriage. So these things, in fact, they, they sometimes need no additional uh, preaching, but just make the point go home in the same words. Please, they are, they are as clear as they are. I thought to suggest three things as I close. In, uh, as you put off the old self and put on the new man, because by all means put off the old self or your old man and march in the same light, put on the new man. Please, yeah? who is created in Christ Jesus uh, for good works that God did, uh, determined beforehand that we should walk, walk in them, isn't it? Yeah, And we have read also that it's this new creation in God is created for righteousness and holiness. So I thought to suggest to you three things in a transformed Christian, which I hope will be part of you. For me, I have tried to... To, to, to use them, to try them out, to, to live my life around them. Uh, you might say them differently, but for me, there are three. One is uh, okwetisa. Really, just okwetisa. A repentant life. Yeah? When you have uh, fallen, you accept. You have fallen, and you seek forgiveness. So, I know that it's not a very easy thing, especially for us as men. So we struggle to, to seek for forgiveness. But please, yeah? <laughs> let me read for you James, James chapter 5, verse 16. You know what it says, isn't it? James 5, 16, what does it say? Um, confess your sins, your trespasses, one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Eliza, Elijah was a man, such and it goes on. Really, this kind of accountability, maybe is what you would call it. When you have fallen, find a brother and confess your sin. Practically. Don't say, ah, man, last night was tight. Last night was tight what? <laughs> say it as it was. Last night was tight. Like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. Then the brother who is receiving that report. Now, you also exercise grace, but not in a condoning way. Yeah? You, you, get what, you get what I'm saying. Yeah? Let, let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's not leave Christianity like it's somewhere in the sky. You have that fellowship that keeps going to heaven and coming back. Please, if you're not living like that here on earth, there's nothing you're doing. Your Christianity of heaven can remain there. We'll find you there when we come. But here, we have to be Real. Real. So, okweti, sir, number one. Number two, umshana. 
I told you this uh, someone has uh, tongues. Eh? So Omushana is really light or walking in the light. Uh, first John chapter 1. You also know what it says. Chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Just walk in the light, please. Walk in the light. You'll have nothing to be ashamed of. When you're trying to hide something, where do you hide it? In darkness. Tikwe. Yes, you hide it in darkness. But the things which are in the light, there's nothing to hide. Omshana. Eh? Ah. In fact, a lot of evil doesn't happen in the mushana. If it needs to happen in the mushana, they will need to create some kind of darkness somewhere. When guys are trying to cut a deal, you know, you ever seen a guy who's asking for a bribe? He didn't ask for it in the mushana. Some kind of darkness. Please walk in the light. Walk in the light. As he also is not just, a, is not just in the light, but he is the light. The light. So, that was number two. Number three, Mbabas, or oh, the grace of God. Mbabas. Uh, Titus, you also know it very well. Chapter two. Uh, Titus chapter two. Verse 11. <clears throat> the heading here in my Bible says, trained by, the, by saving grace. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and ungodly in the present age, looking for the hope, for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that, we might redeem, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify us. Purify, purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. That's the grace of God. Yeah? Yeah? If, you have not, if you didn't know the tongues now, I've taught you three tongues. I've taught you Omshana. I've taught you Okwetisa. I've taught you Mbabas. Now, when they ask you if you have the gift of interpretation, this is what you will say. Omshana. Is really the light. Eh? Walking in the light. Okweti a repentant life. Yeah? Or you would say accountability along that line. Number three, Mbabas is the grace of God. Hallelujah. The, the, the transformation that God calls us for sometimes is not as complicated as we would like to make it. It's just really doing what the things that God has called us to do, yeah? And, and the scriptures are loaded with those, all, all those other things. And uh, so, I'd like us to close. And maybe you, you reflect as we, as we close this time. Maybe bow your head in prayer and uh, think through what we have discussed, what God has called us to, what God has called us to and uh, where he has gotten us from. We began from there that sometimes we think the putting off of the old man is so hard but sometimes we've just forgotten. We've forgotten where God got us from. Pray that God will give you a renewed mind, refresh you and just uh, just remind you of how much he has done. Give you a better perspective, a, a, a new perspective of how much he has done to save us, uh, to bring us to himself and to, to bring us into his family. He has done a great, 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 great work. Lord, it was a precious, precious fountain that saved us from sin. And we are so glad, so glad that we entered in so glad because there Jesus not only saves but keeps us and he keeps us clean glory, 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 glory to your name glory, glory, glory to your name 
Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. And I am so wondrously safe from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my sin was the blood applied, glory to his name. One more time. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. And there to my sin was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Thank you, Lord, for your saving grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for your saving grace, Lord. Thank you. Can you just allow your heart to go out before God? We'll spend a few minutes in, in prayer. Just allow your heart to go out before God. And say, Lord, help me. Maybe I've clung so much to the old man, yet you're saying, let go. Let go. Let go and live a life truly transformed by God. Yeah, just allow your heart to God before God. Allow your heart to God before God. Because there is grace. There is grace to help you. There is grace, grace, grace to help you. So much grace to sustain you. To sustain you. You are saved by grace. You are saved by grace. You are sustained by the grace of God. You are sustained by the grace of God. Even His grace will enable you to walk in the light. To walk in the light. To confess your sin one to another. And to live by His grace. Saying no to ungodliness. Embracing. Embracing the will of God. What is pleasing in His sight. What is honorable before Him in all righteousness and holiness for those good works that God predetermined, predetermined beforehand that you should walk in them. That is what he called you for. You are created in Christ Jesus. The scripture says you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus and to good works which he determined beforehand that you should walk in them. Child of God, will you rise up and walk in those ways that God has called you to live a life that is worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Will you pray if the heart, you know, the fire of God, the love of God has grown cold in your heart and ask God to renew you and refresh you and refresh you. Come on, lift your voice and just pray and say, Lord, refresh me. Refresh me. I have grown cold. I need to be stirred up again. Refresh me. Refresh me. Refresh me to see your goodness, to see your grace. To see how much you have gone out of your way to redeem me, to save me, to call me to yourself, that I might do those things that you have called me to. Help me, O oh God. Help us as young men and young women. Help us at whatever stage in life we are. Help us wherever we are, O oh God, that we might live the life that is worthy of the calling to which we have been called. Help us, O oh God, to be truly truly transformed on the inside even on the outside truly transformed to be the believers that they will look at and say yeah yeah these are believers these are christians they were with him they were with him 
Yeah, and the scripture says that they, and, and they will see us and they will know us by this fruit. This fruit will to draw many to you. Hey, our fruit has drawn some away from you. Forgive us. We pray that, Lord, there will be transformation now to draw many to you, to draw many to you, to draw, to draw many to you, not away, but to draw many to you. Thank you, O oh God. We give you praise for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.